I'm Eric and in this short video I will show you the basics of loading the 3D city data in QGIS. Recently the 3D Geo Information Group at the TU Delft showed the world a countrywide 3D registration of buildings and addresses. Your first entry is a viewer that shows all buildings in a fast and intuitive way and allows you to identify buildings, heights and roof angles. The viewer also functions as a kind of a download portal for the underlying data. So let's have a look at that first. So here we have the viewer. You can use your mouse, the left click to pan and the right click to rotate in different directions as well. Uh, the scroll wheel can be used to zoom in or out. If you're looking at one of the buildings, you can point and click just at any part of the building. It will give you immediately a height and an angle of the specific surface that you're clicking on. As you can see, you get some kind of pointer that is perpendicular to the actual surface that you're clicking on. Again, you can see the angle and the height of the exact place where you clicked. Apart from that, you can also open the attributes table. There's a few extra attributes here, but one of the interesting things is that you could also download immediately the tile that includes this building. If you go to the download page, you find that you can use the city JSON, object files, or geo packages. Let's download the geo package first, as that is the format of choice for most QGIS applications. The tile I've downloaded is here on my desktop. And opening a geo package in QGIS is really easy. You can just drag and drop this on the map canvas. Here you can see the different level of detail data sets that we have. So let's go for the highest level of detail that is available as 3D buildings. And let's open that. And that shows you immediately the buildings as a 2D projection. It is really easy to get a 3D view out of this because there's a 3D viewer incorporated in QGIS nowadays. So one of the things we have to do is we have to look at the uh, 3D view and you see it is not uh, symbolized yet. So we'll just make a very simple visualization out of that using single symbol. It will come in grays and let's have a look at that. So we open a 3D map view And if you look at this one, you can see it is a typical 3D view. Um, using control, you can rotate in different directions here. And you can see the building of architecture again as a 3D building. Identifying one of these buildings will give you a very short list of, well, none too interesting information. So in the geo package, the information is not complete. You don't see any roof heights or angles. So we have to go back to the city JSON to get that right. So let's get back to our download site and also download the city JSON. For this purpose, switch this one off. And as you can see, uh, this was the building that we've been identifying earlier. So let's switch that off because it really looks terrible, all those red lines. So especially for this purpose, there's a plugin, um, the city JSON loader, which is written at TU Delft as well. You can see, uh, install this plugin and it will come in three different ways. It will come into a processing tool. There's the city JSON loader. There's also a button here and it is under the vector menu. So you really can't miss it. If you want to download this one, you can see this is the latest I've uh, downloaded. It will automatically read the parameters for the JSON properties, coordinate reference system and everything is there. There's just a few parameters that need attending to. So here we have split layers according to object type. That would be very nice, but the only object type in this specific data set is building. So it's not 
really of much use. The level of detail, as we've seen in the uh, geo package, there's a few different levels of detail for every object. We can put them as an extra attribute, so you have an extra field including the level of detail in your table. Or you could set up the different LODs as separate layers, and that's what we'll do now. Now the semantic surfaces are interesting, um, as that will um, make automatically a styling for roofs, for doors, windows, um, walls, etc. So let's uh, add that too. Let's load this one and see what happens. As you can see, there is now three different data sets included in the layers panel. We'll just have a look at the LOD 2.2, which should be similar to this one. So if we use this one now for a 3D visualization, we could add a new 3D map view. And the 3D map view here, as you can see, it already has, let me check this, it already has different coloring for the roofs and for the walls. You can see here in the layer styling, if you look at the 3D objects, that it is a rule-based styling based on the semantic surface. In this model, um, this model allows for windows and doors, but the actual data doesn't have that. So you won't see anything changing there. There's one more thing here, and that is that if you look at the ground, it is not really a crisp line here. And that is because you're looking at the same time, you're also looking at a, uh, um, as a ground data set. So let's have a look where that comes from. Well, it's not that hard if you know what you're looking for. So uh, let me show you. If I switch off the wall surfaces, also the ground surfaces, and you'll find that you can still see the original 2D drawing as well. So it should be found somewhere in the 2D data. So I'll switch the wall and the ground surfaces back on again, and I'll move to the 2D data. Now, if we uh, don't show the 2D data, then you'll see that all the little carved edges disappear. And now you have a smooth transition between the wall and the ground. You might say that this is not really interesting because you don't see what's on the ground. So we could add a specific um, background, for example. And now you see the, uh, the buildings shown on the map. So this is all nice and we have a, a kind of a interesting visualization here uh, which you can play around with and rotate and look at different angles and but it's just playing around and there should be more to 3D data. So that is something that we're going to do in the next video. Enjoy more 3D fun with geodata.